Hi Cancers, this is Nicole. Uh, we're about to embark on your July 2019 Oracle Blessing. Uh, I mentioned in the intro that I'm choosing one card from each of my Oracle decks, including my Ethereal Visions Tarot deck. And my intention is not to predict your future, but to instead just offer some sweet support for the month ahead so that you might be in alignment with your highest good. Uh, so we're just calling on Reiki, your spirit guides, your archangels, um, your well ancestors for support today so that you uh, receive the message that you need to really kind of feel into what it is you are uh, bringing into the month ahead. All right. So just taking a moment, close your eyes and feel into your heart space. And you can also feel into your belly, your ego center to see if there's anything you're wanting, anything you're wondering, anything you're hoping for, anything you're yearning for anything, any pain that's lingering, and just noticing how you're feeling, what you're experiencing. And connecting um, your higher self in this moment to my higher self. And for the duration of this reading, may you receive everything you need to be on the right path. And may our time together lead you to more peace, more happiness, more ease, more love. And at the end of this session, our, our energy will no longer be connected, don't worry. Uh, and we're only connected in a very, very, uh, subtle way so you can't pick up on any of my energy. I'm not sending you anything uh, of my own, only maybe through Reiki, uh, which is energy that you already have within you. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So just a, um, okay. So the first card uh, from the Ethereal Visions deck is the Six of Wands, uh, which is a card of victory, which is quite wonderful. Isn't it beautiful? I love this guy quite handsome on a white horse, right? Uh, so this is a good, a good sign. So feeling victorious this, this July cancer. So maybe, uh, it's a good idea to just go into the month feeling like you've already won. Isn't that a fun mentality to use? So rather than this idea that you need to achieve something, uh, as just entering in July and for the duration of July, your birthday month, if you're a July cancer baby, uh, having in the back of your mind that you're already victorious, you've already won, and now it's time to celebrate. Okay, some of these cards I might need to look into the booklets for information. Uh, just because I'm a little new to this, I use these all these decks in my Reiki sessions, in my healings, and in my classes. But typically, I always read from the deck or from the book, and then I uh, assess from there and give advice from there. Yeah, I know a lot of cancers have had like a lot of obstacles this year, so we deserve to feel victorious this this July, our birthday month. I hope that we can really kind of tap into that and and feel into that. All right, next we have acceptance from the chakra deck. And it's a wren, so it's a it's an invitation to ground, right? To connect with earth and and to uh, really feel into that that energy of, you know, not needing to change what is to accept yourself, to accept the people around you. Um and how can we do that, right? Sometimes it's really hard to accept things how they are. So maybe through meditating, right? Through having gratitude, uh, through, through 
through praying, through um, asking for assistance from your higher self, through setting the intention to to accept. You know, uh, in the beginning of the day, you know, spirit, God, whatever, whoever you pray to, um, please help me accept the things that I can't change today. But let's actually consult the Oracle uh, book lit for these, but sometimes the messages are a lot different than uh, my my intuition says. Acceptance. Innocence and an inability to see one's gifts are indicated, as well as the protection of spirit guides, good luck, and an increase in self-esteem and confidence. Yeah, yeah, it's all about self-acceptance. Just got to love yourself exactly how you are. I know a lot of cancers have like body image issues and we, we love food and because society kind of shuns it, we develop this like really weird relationship where we think that we're wrong because of how we interact in the world and, and see if you can just accept yourself how you are. Maybe, maybe, uh, society is wrong and you're actually the, the, uh, true beauty, right? So stop comparing yourself. And if you're a male-bodied person, this still applies. Just because you don't look like everyone else doesn't mean that you're not absolutely perfect exactly how you are. So yeah, this is a message of, of self-acceptance, which I think is really interesting, especially in the summer months, right? Okay, now to the Sacred Rebels deck. Sacred Rebels deck is my my jam, my favorite by Alana Farchild. She has so many amazing decks. Uh, this one I got at Namaste Books in uh, Manhattan, and it just kind of fell off the shelf. And it's very mysterious, and I'm just like, oh, I guess I'm buying this. It's a little pricey. So from Sacred Rebels deck, you have Beyond the Mind, the Heart Beats. So this is just an invitation to get the hell out of your damn head and into your heart, uh, right? So stop analyzing things. Just just stop overthinking. It doesn't matter. Just follow your heart and be patient, right? Like just because you, you're, sometimes we think that our heart is wrong because things aren't manifesting in the moment. So then we start to analyze and, and all this nonsense that we do, the monkey mind, but if you just trust in your heart and you feel into it, you're going to feel so yummy in those moments that it will bring you into alignment to the things that you want rather than you trying to figure it out. So taking time on a daily basis to kind of drop into your heart and feel into what it is you're actually yearning for, what it is you actually want. And don't worry about how it's going to happen. Just breathe into it and then just trust that when you are really, really aligned and tapped into what's going on there, your mechanism, your subconscious mind will help you get there. It might not be instant, which is why we get into the anxious mind, right? Because it's not instant manifestation. Just trusting if it was instant, it probably wouldn't work out exactly. You wouldn't be ready for it. So for whatever reason, you know, it's in your best interest to wait a little bit for it, um, but just allow yourself to actually want what you want, feel what you feel, and get out of your head as often as possible. A great way to get out of your head is by going to nature, spending time in nature, uh, connecting to the actual goddess, right? That earth, it's it's the mother of all things, right? Everything on the planet is feeding off of her. So if you feel like you're super in your head and you're in this place where you're not connected with yourself, you need nature. That's how you can really get back in there. And I don't mean a city park. I mean like you have to go. You've got to get, get the hell into the woods or something. But for now, city park might be good. Let's see if there's anything else from the Oracle book. Just in case she has a better message. This oracle has a message for you. There is a way of the mind which can make mountains out of molehills, even when it thinks it is turning mountains into molehills. Then there is the way of the heart. It is a subterrain that and moves subtly beneath possible obstacles, intelligently shifting with exquisite sensitivity, sensing the way forward through dangerous pathways and responding to 
to what is before it even occurs in the physical world. However, the heart's intelligence cannot see and know in the same way that we do when we allow the mind to direct us. We have to be open to another way if we want to benefit from, from the innate intelligence of the heart. So that's what I was just talking about. So just taking that time to really feel into it and then just trust that the subconscious mind, not the conscious mind, the subconscious mind is going to help get you there. This is spiritual practice. This is why we pray. This is why we sit in meditation. This is why we do yoga. It is not for abs and a big at or whatever it is. It's it's so that we can learn how to use this mechanism, how, how to tap into our heart and let our subconscious mind and spirit and the universe really guide us in the right direction. If we're not in, tapped into the intelligence of our heart, we live our lives from our self-will, our ego, our mind, and it's icky and it's comparing ourselves to other people and we, we wind up putting on masks of people that we've seen rather than ourselves. And then who, you know, five years after pushing towards a goal that we, we needed to achieve, we might realize that it's completely inauthentic and doesn't make us happy. So on a regular basis, drop into the heart. A uh, great way to do this is just place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly and just breathe. Okay. And then last for cancers, uh, sun, moon, rising and Venus for the month of July. Uh, what do cancers need to hear to get into alignment this month ahead? I love being a cancer. We get a bad rap because we're a little sensitive and emotional, but um, the reason why people give us a bad rap is because they're uncomfortable with their emotions. It's actually our superpower that we're so in touch with them. Uh, and really the issue that we have is that society doesn't uh, appreciate that. But once we get uh, further along in our path, we stop giving a crap what society thinks and we realize that our sensitivity is a superpower. It's a psychic gift. It allows us to comfort and nurture others. Uh, it helps for creativity. It helps with a lot of things. So this is the Goddess Oracle deck. All right. And then last for for the month uh, from the Goddess Oracle deck, we took I picked Amaterasu, Amaterasu, and she represents beauty. So it really seems like the blessing for the month of July for cancers is just self-love and confidence and allowing yourself to be already victorious, to feel that you are whole. There's nothing that needs to change about you. You are absolutely perfect how you are. You are the, the mold and just allow yourself to be that and don't compare. Just every time the mind wants to compare, drop into the heart. Every time the mind wants to think, oh, that body, blah, blah, oh my God, that's a human being and I love them. <laughs> Don't compete. Don't compare yourself to anyone. There is no, no one can ever compare to you. You are so beautiful. You're amazing. You, you have so much to offer the world and you're not going to do it if you continue to turn in on yourself and, and beat yourself up. Uh, so really, really happy that you have this blessing of self-confidence and a self-appreciation. And I hope that it brings you so much joy every time you are in a setting where you feel even a little bit in conflict with yourself, just tap, drop into the heart, remind yourself that you are the mold and there, and you're already victorious. You accept yourself. You love yourself, that your heart is the more intelligent uh, tool that you have to use and you're absolutely beautiful. And the best way to know that you're beautiful is by seeing beauty all around you. Notice the other people around you. See how beautiful they are. Let them know. Notice how beautiful the trees are. Notice how beautiful the temperature is. The more you appreciate and notice how beautiful others are and everything is, the more beauty will come back to you. Have a wonderful day. Uh, I hope you have the best month ever. Happy birthday and namaste.